that. Yeah. Okay. So today, I've been, uh, can you see my screen? Uh, the, uh, the the title of the presentation. I. Uh, do you see? Oh. Do you see? Okay. There we are. Thank you. Okay. Great. So I've been asked by Peter to do you uh, some uh, presentation about the what's going on in the market. And uh, today, what I was planning to do, is, uh, first of all, is to give you just a, a quick overview of what's going on in the uh, overall competitive environment of the uh, blueberry industry, including both uh, wild and cultivated. Uh, I, I want to uh, I had the opportunity to assist to uh, the uh, last uh, International Blueberry Organization uh, seminar. And, and they did a, a very good overview of what's going on and what's the future trend for the industry. So I, I just had a few quick slides and I, to introduce the, uh, the the subject. And then I'm going to move to, uh, I guess, what uh, is more of interest to you. But the first section that do, does have, have an impact on, uh, on the second issue is what's the outlook for this year. So basically, I'm going to go through that very quickly. And I will be more than happy to answer a question uh, after the presentation. Well, the first thing that has been presentation, presented at IBO is the future trend of the world blueberry, both cultivated and wild a production trend. We're currently at 4.5 or 4.48 uh, uh, billion pounds, sorry, uh, uh, of blueberry produced all over the world. And, and, and the trend will not stop. We are expecting by the end of uh, 2030 that the uh, the production should be around 6.6, 6.7, and somewhere even more at 7 billion uh, pounds of, of blueberries. So they are still pushing a lot. There's a lot of development in the industry, and they are still seeing some market opportunity to develop the production. And as you are aware, most of the growth will not come from the wild. This is total increase in production over the last uh, uh, 20 years. And here is the uh, the growth for the cultivated, the the uh, the uh, how do you say the uh, purple uh, line. And here is the wild. So if we compare wild to uh, cultivated, we can say that the the growth is fairly fairly, fairly stable. <laughs> and when I compare, because that was total cultivated, including both fresh and, and uh, frozen, but this one is only for uh, frozen, the frozen sector. This is total frozen uh, production for both cultivated plus white. As you can see, there has been a rapid increase in the last five years. Uh, here is the cultivated. Basically, they multiplied it by three times the production of or the, the, the packing of, of cultivated blueberry in the market. So it's a lot of, uh, of blueberries. Here is the, the wild. So basically, what we can see is more, there is more and more and more competition coming from the cultivated frozen blueberry. And, 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 and this has changed the game over time. Because in the past, there was not really a lot of substitute for wild blueberries. But over the last five years, what happened is that the, the, you, uh, you, not your buyers, but the buyer of your buyers, the end, end user, if I could say, have more and more uh, opportunity to substitute the, uh, the wild for the cultivated. Uh, and one key aspect of that is, as you know, uh, also, well, maybe every four or five years, we, we are short of supply due to, let's say, uh, mother nature. And in the past, it was easy to re-enter in the market because there was no other solution for it, for the end consumer. But now, if you look at 22, 23, there's a handful of supply of of, of cultivated blueberries. So it means that the competition from the cultivated is more and more aggressive on you. And, and especially for your end consumer, it's a reliable substitute for one. And the reason why I'm saying that is, I think this year we are 
Uh, I was expecting much higher prices at the beginning of the season, but for many reasons, and that's one of the reasons the price is, is lower. We'll, we'll go through that later. But remind, uh, keep this in mind that, that that is a game changer for you guys in the industry. Uh, so the key implication for Wild Blueberry, uh, there has been a very good presentation about the phases of the blueberry uh, development over the last 20 years. And what they were saying, this, the, the first, the phase one was really, you know, one, let's say in the uh, uh, early 2000, uh, or maybe in, let's say in the 90s and, and early 2000, it was easy to sell the wild blueberry. <laughs> I'm not saying it was that easy because I don't want to be uh, uh, offended, but I don't want to offend the your buyers, but. But basically, I mean, it was really supply driven. Everybody were looking for wild and it was fairly easy. Uh, after that, as the production of, of cultivated developed and, and, and we, we saw more and more of that, we, we had to be more, push more on the quality and the specification of the wild to, to make sure that we, we keep our uh, edge in the market. But right now with, with this, the current uh, volume of, of cultivated, and the future trend, as you say, it will not stop. It will just uh, accelerate. Basically, uh, we're going to have to work more and more hard to be able to get an edge in the market. And, and market segmentation, value creation uh, will be more and more important. And, and, and what I mean for that with market segmentation, it means that you're going to have to push even harder to differentiate your product in the market from the cultivator to make sure that the consumer, and, and I'm not saying the end buyer, but really the consumer, we, we need to keep uh, uh, the consumer to ask your product to your uh, end, consumer, uh, end buyers. So basically you're gonna have to work more and more to do more. I, I know you do a lot of promotion, but you're gonna have to be more aggressive in the future. Uh, and you're gonna have to tackle high-end market segment, meaning people with higher income, uh, to improve and, and, and to improve the value cost ratio, because uh, I have uh, Peter has me to go over a few uh, input costs. As you as you are aware, you've been badly hurt by uh, increase in input costs over the last two years. But basically, to to be able to 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 recover some uh, profitability, you're going to have to 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 be more uh, to market better your product in the future. Also, product innovation. Uh, it's always important, right, to develop new way to uh, new ways. Sorry, to uh, to consume or to uh, to present your product, and also and 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 that one we've been talking about that for many years. What, what, one big weaknesses of your industry is the uh, the unstable supply year after year. I have a few slides on that later on, and I will come back on that. But, but let's say you're the end consumer, uh, 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 end buyer, sorry, and you use wild blueberry and you receive. But one year out of three or four, you, you are not able to get the supply you want, or you, if you were to get it, it's three times the price you used to pay. I mean, what you do, you try to, to find alternative. And the past, as I said, alternative were not necessarily there. But right now, the, there is alternative with the, the cultivated. And, and this, this is really a game changer for you guys. So basically, you, we're going to have to find a way to improve that. And, and, and the, it, it's not by changing Mother Nature. In fact, with the climate change, it's going to be probably even more difficult. But we, we, we'll probably need an industry view about how we can better manage inventory. And inventory this year, is probably the, the other key factor that explain why the price is not that high. Uh, I, will, I will show you some slide later on, but uh, right now the, there has been a liquidation of an inventory at a very low price in Europe. And that's not good, uh, especially with this, uh, we'll see it later. The, the production is not that good this year, but due to the inventory and the cash flow, some cash flow issue, there has been sales at very low prices, which is not good. So we're going to have to improve quality cost ratio, as I mentioned uh, for, uh, earlier in the presentation. 
Peter asked me to go through the input cost processor and producer. Another aspect that was not good for your, but for processor and for you, producer, is the cost of transport by bulk has increased by 60% in the last 10 years. And most of the increase happened over the last uh, two years. Uh, that's the NDC uh, of the CFRET uh, transport cost. And here's the uh, index. As you can see, uh, the 162, it's an index starting at 100 in 2014. We were fairly stable, but then bang. And this is due to Ukraine war. You know what happened with the energy cost, every, everything uh, went up. So the Ukraine war had a, 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 a detrimental effect on you about on, on the input cost, especially for transportation. And also during the COVID time, there has been some issue with the availability, availability of, of, uh, of cargo. Uh, the cost of transportation by truck also increased a lot, 40% over the last you know, two years. And, and finally, fertilizer, as you know, because that's one of your main input cost, uh, is, has also badly been affected by this. Uh, we had almost uh, doubled uh, the, the cost of fertilizer over the last uh, two years. Right now, the good news, uh, the fertilizer prices are aiming downward. So uh, uh, if I have an advice for 23, uh, your net, uh, for 24, when you're going to buy your fertilizer, uh, keep an eye on the evolution of the market. Right now, there's a tremendous downward pressure on the fertilizer price. Hopefully, it will uh, come back to more regular prices because the uh, I know that you're right now in a squeeze with a low price for producer for your, your, your blueberries and, and a high input cost, which is not good for your margin. So that, that was just like the overall view of the uh, economic environment that you are currently in. And, and now I'm going to go through the uh, outlook for uh, this year. <laughs> Sorry. Hmm. Uh, just a reminder of last year, as I told you last year, uh, we've been doing a lot of analysis over here, statistical analysis, I've done a lot with Rémi Lambert and I've done some myself. And uh, basically uh, what, what, what it shows here is that your price is affected by production level. It's, it's really a supply and demand. You are in a supply and demand industry, you are in an open market. Uh, so the production level has an impact on your price. The inventories is probably the most important factors. And, and fairly easy, why is inventory an important factor? Because inventory is basically the end result between supply and demand. Because it means that if you produce more than, than what is consumed, it means that inventory is going to go up. So it, 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 if the supply is greater than the demand, it's fairly, as you understand, the price goes down. Though when the supply is lower and demand, the price goes up. So basically, inventory is, is really the, the end, end results of the relationship between supply and demand. Disposable income, uh, that's another one. You are a luxury good from an economic point of view. I mean, it, 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 when times are difficult for consumer, that's probably one of the first product they will cut. So uh, right now, as you know, we are not in an easy uh, uh, the economic situation for uh, the general uh, population is not easy. There has been a lot of, uh, uh, how do you say, uh, news about the fact that there's a lot of inflation at the uh, retailer uh, level for uh, the uh, groceries. And so this is not good news for you. Cultivated frozen blueberry price is also, as I mentioned, is a substitute. So the you, you, uh, your end user will, will uh, look at the price of the, the cultivated. And also the, the previous year of wild blueberry, it's like a two year moving average. So basically that was your the maritime export price. And that's the model we have developed. And it shows that with those these uh, variables, we were able to explain the variation in the price over time. That, I, I went to a more complete presentation last year at your annual meeting, but I just wanted to refresh you what are the key factors that affect your uh, your price? So that being said, we're, we're going to start with some key uh, key indicator inventory. 
this is the U.S. cold storage. We do not have Canadian uh, cold storage. We do not have private one in U.S. neither. But uh, what I, uh, as we can see, there's more, uh, the inventory is, is still uh, going up. Though uh, it's not a huge increase, but still uh, the inventories remains high. And, and as I said, with high inventory, it means that it's not, it, it puts some pressure uh, on, uh, on, on, on the price. Uh, Canadian inventories are also high. This is based on some discussion I have had with the processor and other industry member. And this is this is probably in the short run uh, that why why we get uh, a price trend that is uh, going down. And, and this price trend start. This is last year monthly Canadian export price. This is the price that the uh, that is reported by uh, the, the Canadian border. Uh, this is the, uh, the the export price for wild frozen blueberries. And what it shows is that we started uh, at 239 and we ended at 225. So the price was going down month after month after month last year. Uh, and and and, uh, and uh, the inventory were were not declining very rapidly. There was not a lot of movement. We could already see last year uh, that the demand was slowing down. Uh, and this year, this is for last year crop, and for this year crop, I have two months, and we are roughly 30 cents below at this point in terms of uh, export price. So it shows a, a decrease of 15% uh, in price over uh, one year out of the order. And the current general economic condition and that's good for the price of wild blueberry. Uh, wild blueberry market, as I mentioned, is sensitive to purchase the purchasing power of consumer. And, and to illustrate that, and the situation is particularly more difficult in Europe than in North America. I, uh, I will remind you that we export Canadian export is we export roughly 35, sorry, 35 percent of our total export goes to Europe. 45, 45 goes to US and the remainder some roughly 10 in, in on the Japanese market and the remaining 10 in, in several market. But Europe is still a, an important market. Uh, and the economic condition, as you are aware, is probably more difficult in Europe. And, and one thing we, we, we don't speak very often, uh, they do produce wild well, bilberries, some call it wild blueberries, and there's some uh, discussion which one is the best, but but still they produce roughly 100 million pounds a year. Uh, the Scandinavian countries produce some, and Ukraine produce a lot too. So, uh, and they have, uh, especially Ukrainian, as a more and more, uh, are more and more a leader in the uh, bilberry industry. Uh, and uh, uh, what, that's one publication I read very often. It's East Fruit. It covers all the Eastern uh, Europe countries' uh, situation and market condition. And basically, they, they, last uh, summer, uh, I got that article that was kind of uh, scary. <laughs> why blueberries? Why are prices declining while yields are low? Because the crop was not so good. Because I'm saying one on 100 million pounds this year, but last year it was probably 150, 160, 180 million pounds. So there has been a decline. 100 million pounds is probably an average. But basically, what they are saying is, that, uh, according to East Fruit, rapid decline is observed on the European market of frozen wild blueberries. Price decline came as a surprise for many freezers. As earlier, there were many reports about the expectation of a low harvest in Ukraine, Poland, and other countries in the region. And those guys, in, they are exporting in the same market that we do. Netherlands, UK, uh, Germany, uh, all, all the same place that where we are exporting our product. Uh, and uh, they, they were uh, showing a, a, a for for a grade one uh, product a price declining from roughly uh, from two euros to one four euro forty, and and since that time price have also declined as we've seen uh, in the previous figure. So and the reason for that. 
what they are explaining right, roughly, not in this article, but another one that was following a few weeks after, one key factor that affect the price decline is consumption reduction due to the economic conditions. You know, when people have less money, the 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 the, the, the how do you say they spend their budget on on, on staple food. I mean, they they, they keep uh, they they want to to have the the maximum uh, food for their box. So, uh, and also another issue, and that's probably the one that uh, we have to. Uh, it's difficult, but every time that we see a price decline when there's a low production, it, it, it's really uh, related to the uh, storage costs, but also the cash flow for the industry. Because as you know, with the interest rate that uh, went up, it costs more and more to keep a product in the, in the, uh, in the freezer. So the, the squeeze that the processor are in is that their buyer, they don't want to buy in advance because they don't want to bear the cost to, uh, to add the, the interest cost to, to uh, associate it to the, uh, if they buy a, a lot of volume in advance. And, and, and on, on the other side, your processor, when they keep the product, they have to support the uh, interest cost. So basically this squeeze uh, has resulted in some very low prices sales, and that was not good news. Uh, and, and I'll show you some figure here. Uh, this is the DC cultivated ex export price. This is for cultivated, as you know, British Columbia is, is, is not producing any wild, but producing cultivated blueberries, and that's for frozen. Uh, and here is the, so what we can see, there's a trend up here, and I think it will continue in the near future, but look at our trend here, it's going down, 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 that's the, the uh, Canadian, Canadian export for a while, so as we can see, both are probably, will probably uh, uh, cross each other in a, in a few months, uh, and here is the, the wild frozen export in the Ukrainian market. And, 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 and that's what processors are telling me, is that they are selling at a lower price than cultivated in Europe. And, and the reason for that is because there has been, uh, I, I don't know if it's clear, but that, that's, that's wild here in Europe. Uh, what, what they are telling me is, uh, is that there's, there's a, an issue with uh, cash flow for or many processor and they decided to uh, to, to sell, uh, to liquidate their inventory. So what's next? Well, let's start good news now. <laughs> uh, wild production uh, is uh, in North America. That's for uh, Maritimes, PEI, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, Quebec, and Maine. This is total. And this is uh, maritime. Uh, production is down roughly uh, 100 and I don't have the exact number by art, but probably around 120, 120 pounds, sorry, a million pounds. Quebec is uh, probably at 112 million pounds. Uh, and here is the main at around uh, 70 million pounds. So as we can see, there's a decrease. Though Even though there's a decrease, it's still a good crop. If I look at the previous year, we're at 308 million pounds this year produ production. And, and for sure, it's not the same situation than 2015, 16, which were very, very low prices. And hopefully, so that will ease the situation. The, uh, the other good news is the cultivated, as you know, El Nino had a very bad, a tremendous bad effect on, on the production of cultivated uh, blueberries in the uh, West Coast, uh, including uh, California, Washington, Oregon, and also, obviously also uh, British Columbia. So the, the total production for Canada, US is, is going down a lot for cultivated. So for this year, that's going to give us a break. Uh, so uh, this is U.S. and this is Canada reduction. Uh, BC has been badly, badly hurt this year. 
So basically what it shows is that the, there's gonna, it's like if we're on the squeeze right now, I will show you that this slide here. This is total pack for both frozen and wild in, in, in North America. So we're down. So we're starting the year with, let's say high inventories, pressure on cash flow for processor, buyers that don't want to get long in the market because they are not so sure if their consumer is gonna buy everything and they don't want to be too old uh, inventory with a high interest rate. So we are currently in a, in a phase of inventory liquidation, but when this inventory liquidation will be over, we're gonna be in a tricky situation because the supply is not is good, but not there's not an over, not, not supply, but production is not in an over situation. So basically this is total for, for both. As we can see, uh, the, the, there's a reduction. So basically, so the, the production this year or the packing for uh, for, for for frozen product is is down, uh, probably in the average. And what I, I've done is uh, this is total supply year for both. Well, how I estimated supply, I took production of both wild and cultivated, and I added the, added the inventory at the beginning of the season, the inventory uh, July 1st, and this is the 10-year average. So basically, this year production is, the, is in the 10-year average. And as you are aware, consumption is going up. The consumption in 2024 is much higher than in 2014, 15. So basically, we should see a, a, a rapid reduction in inventory in the next few months. That's what I'm expecting. And usually when we see that in a few months from now, uh, I might expect a, a reverse trend in price. The question is how long it's going to take. It's very difficult to, to say. And basically, that's the. I don't have the, any private information about the, for how many months they are committed with the with their how, how your processor are committed with their buyers, what position they took, uh, uh, are those sell of, to liquidate the inventory were uh, for for immediate delivery short term. Uh, we'll see, but uh, basically I'm expecting that the price may still, because my prices are for September, I'm always roughly two months late because I, I rely on, on statistical StatCan data to, to report, but but basically I'm expecting the price will, is probably currently in a low phase, but we should <laughs> see some improvement in, next, in, in the months ahead after uh, Christmas. So basically, that was my presentation, and I'm open for questions. Any uh, questions from the audience here or online? I, I just ask you to go to the mic if you have a question. You're fairly quiet. <laughs> First, first talk in the morning, I guess. Now we have a question here. Um, Gilbert, do you have any idea uh, if the uh, cultivated producers are hurting as much as uh, the wild producers? Like it costs us probably 50 cents a pound to grow our berries. So yes. What, what kind of status are the cultivated growers in? Very good point. Yes, they are. And in fact, uh, I made a presentation at Webana last was it, uh, two weeks ago. Uh, basically, <laughs> sorry for that. Yes, they are, and, and and that's the key issue because they are expecting the margin. Basically, the situation that you are in, and I'm including both wild and, and cultivated. And cultivated will probably be more badly hurt than you because the input cost is even more important for them. Uh, they are expecting a, a rationalization in the sector in, in, in the next few years. Because what, what, what they are expecting is that the, the margin is going to be more squeezed in the future due to the more and more supply in the market. And, and uh, basically, uh, what they are expecting is that the, 
the cultivator grower that will be able to uh, survive are the one that will be able to improve their yield uh, uh, because that's going to be the key issue for them and to uh, uh, replace their uh, tree uh, uh, very, very rapidly. In fact, they are, they are, their view is that they, they're going to have to replace it now every six or seven years uh, to, with the new uh, variety that produces more rapidly and a bigger fruit, uh, more sweet, sweeter fruit. And the one that will be able to do that, they will be able to, uh, send, uh, to, to get a premium in the market for the fresh, because that's where the money is for the cultivated. For them, frozen is like a residual market. So basically, the one that will not be able to do that, uh, it's going to be very difficult. And, and, and the, uh, the frozen market is, it, it, they cannot rely on that to, to, to survive. So they have to, to reinvest. So the, the view of the guys there is that there's going to be ration, rationalization, but not only for producer, but also uh, for, uh, for, um, for the uh, marketer, like the uh, both processor, but also the one that sells fresh. They, they are expecting consolidation, meaning that uh, they got, they got, there's going to be less and less uh, buyers of, of cultivated in the future and, and more concentrated the, the industry. Is there uh, any other questions? So uh, I guess we're, basically what you're saying, we're going to know a little bit more um, early in the new year on whether or not uh, end sales start to increase or not. Yeah, hopefully the market will start to uh, catch up and especially if the economic condition uh, improve. Uh, I guess the uh, the current interest rate is badly hurting the consumer in, in terms of ca of their whole cash flow <laughs> because the uh, mortgage uh, takes more and more of their budget. So uh, the, it means that they have to cut somewhere. Uh, they have to uh, how do you say to uh, to reduce the expenditure in other <laughs> aspect of their budget and and and, and food is is one of the place where they try to uh, to get the maximum out, uh, food for their dollar. So they, they, they will rely more and more on staple food rather than more like high-end high or uh, high-quality, high-end uh, product. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, uh, we do have a few minutes for a couple more questions of anybody online, but if not, um, we actually have a break scheduled to maybe get some coffee in and have a muffin perhaps. But um, I want to thank uh, Gilbert for the presentation. And uh, yes, and if anybody has questions, they can forward them through me and we can try and uh, get some of those answered after. Yeah, feel free to uh, send me a question. I'll be more than happy to answer, I guess. And my objective here is not to necessarily give you good news or bad news, because I know the presentation might be a bit more, maybe not what you wanted to to, to hear, but uh, my, 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 what I'm trying to do and I'm, is always to give the, uh, the way I see the market, the way it is, and, uh, and, and to, to just give you the, 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 the how do you see the, the current situation, and uh, for the future, I mean, uh, you're gonna have to uh, work uh, more closely with. Uh, I, I guess if I have one advice is work more aggressively to develop market. I mean, it's, and to this differentiate while, and and put in the head of the consumer that it's the uh, the best product in the world. And to make sure that you can get a, a, a premium in the market, because right now what we're, where I'm nervous is that we're going to lose our premium in the market, and and we need it to uh, to to cover the cost that you have to bear. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.